what's up? Welcome to my channel. I am Miley, and this is the first time I am standing for an intro. Yeah! Woohoo! So it is Monday, May 4th, and if you didn't know, tonight was supposed to be the Met Gala in New York, but it has been postponed. So due to it being postponed, people have been flocking to social media trying out the Met Ball Challenge. What that means is people take stuff from around their house or unconventional items and turn it into their favorite look from previous Met Galas. Well, I knew when I saw this, I definitely wanted to try this out. Unconventional items meets couture, what can be better than that? You're probably now wondering, Miley, what look are you going to do? Well, I am going to do a look that took place two years ago. It has by far been my favorite look of all time. It is over the top, but also so classy and elegant and beautiful. I am going to be doing the 2018 look that Blake Lively wore. It was the heavenly body year. It's this beautiful red gown with this gold bodice. So without further ado, I'm gonna get started. I will see you guys on the other side. Hey guys, it's Voice Over Miley here to talk about my process and plan going into this project or lack thereof plan. Wesley agrees there was some rough spots along the way. To start this project out, I had to add some padding to my girl Judy here so that her measurements matched my measurements. And even in this process, I used some unconventional items like a tight tank top and a large sock to give Judy these lovely lumpy boobs. Oh no, Sheila lost her legs. And using tight shorts and a t-shirt, I was able to give Jenny her butt implants. Because she's a little lacking in the back end. And once Tanya was done with her cosmetic surgery, it was finally time to actually start this dress. Now you get to see me struggle with some saran wrap. I'm probably stating the obvious here, but saran wrap is really great for clinging together so that I could form the bodice. If it can cover up your leftovers, it can definitely cover up your... <clears throat> To lock this shape into place, I put tape over the saran wrap. This actually makes for a pretty solid bodice and is really easy to work with. So now Janice is not showing off her lady bits. Continuing on with this process, I constantly was referencing the dress I was trying to recreate so that I could get the shape of the bodice right. And here's me whacking myself in the face with a plastic bag filled with red plastic tablecloths that I used to make the skirt. Now comes the first big struggle of this dress, creating this panel. I mean, look at that thing. It's got gathering all the way up and it works up into the bodice. It's got a unique shape. So taking a plastic tablecloth, cutting it into a fourth, I just started to gather it up the front of my girl Linda here. Once I had gathered and pinned about a foot down, since that gathered fabric is worked up into the bodice, I took some tape and started to tape over some of the gathered fabric so that it looked like the gathered fabric was working up into the bodice just like the original dress. Oh, great shot, Miley. Super artsy. That was me trying to show you that I used a cut-up nylon to replicate that sheer fabric on the sides of the panel that show off Blake's leg, but I figured a thicker nylon would do the trick and also not be as risque since, you know, I'm definitely no Blake Lively. And I got halfway down pinning and realized I needed to continue on with my gathering and pinning. And this went on and on for what seemed like forever. 
just gathering and pinning my life away. And when I was done, it looked like this. I know it looks like a tragic mess, but it does get better. Wesley, what do you think? Tough critic. Now that the gathering was complete, I could finally attach the nylon to each side to continue shaping this front panel. And this is one of many mistakes I made. I wish I would have attempted sewing this, but I just wasn't sure how sewing plastic would go. So I came up with the genius idea of using a hot glue gun, which definitely didn't melt the plastic and also burn the crap out of my hand. Attaching some tissue paper to the hip region on Jessica, this was an attempt to get the right lift in the skirt but again, I was getting ahead of myself because, well, the underskirt wasn't even completely done. So why I did this right now, I do not know. Taking a tablecloth, I wrapped it around Jenny's back half so that her butt was finally covered. The fact that I already had those tissue papers on the hip definitely made it harder to attach. But again, that was me just getting ahead of myself. And to move on and finally finish off this underskirt, I just attached that red tablecloth to the gathered area right under the nylon. To create the overskirt and train, it was actually the easiest part of this whole dress. Taking a tablecloth the hot dog way, or is that the hamburger way? I don't know, I always got those two confused. I covered up that tissue paper and wrapped it around to the center back and put a big old pleat in the center back. And if you're not familiar with the technical term center back, it just means the middle of your back. I know, you have to be like a genius to figure that one out. Once I was done completing the same steps on the other side, the overskirt and train were complete. Now I have to paint it. Great. Finally, I am at the step I was actually looking forward to, painting and decorating. <laughs> My first steps were to paint this front panel to match the applique that is on the original dress. At first, I really did try to stick as closely to the original design, but basically when I hit right around here, I decided to just take some artistic liberty and create my own design that kind of similarly replicates the original design. And this is the part where I realized I wish I would have gathered and painted this before I attached it to the dress and not had to paint this while it was attached to the dress. But this is what happens when you don't really have a plan. Painting this nylon was actually the closest I could get any of my painting that I did to the original design since it was flat and also had the dress form backing it up. And I love the way this design turned out. To cover up that line between the nylon and the panel, I hot glued some beans to cover that up. Now to get to this ugly bodice. Ugh, that's much better. Decorating this bodice, I really didn't have a plan like the rest of this dress. I had some beans and I had some rhinestones and that's all I really had planned. The closer I looked at the original beading, it reminded me of this old beaded necklace that I had. And why I still have this necklace, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I purchased this when I was like 13 because it reminded me of a scarf Miley Cyrus wore in Hannah Montana. Can't believe I just admitted that. But hey, we're just being Miley. And I really have nothing left to say about decorating the front of this. So just watch this quick montage of me bedazzling my life away. The only thing 
worth noting on the back is I had to switch to silver confetti because I ran out of my beaded necklace for the back. And to make the center back tab stand up, I used straws to act as a fake boning. And once the front and back reminded me of Tamatoa, it was time to move on. Boom, boom, boom. The moment is finally here. The thing I was avoiding doing, painting this train and skirt. And let me tell you, it took some time. Like the front of the dress, I stuck loosely to the original embroidery and just continued the design all the way down the train. Any second now, I'm going to drop my paintbrush. Oh, there it is, because my cat decided he wanted to throw up on my dress and I had to pick him up quickly before he could. And to cover up that mark, thank you, Wesley, I just added an extra little design. Here comes the culprit himself back so that he can sleep on his heating pad and watch me paint. I added these little swirls to the edge of the train to add a little trim effect and then I cut out the corners of each side to round out this train and added some more gold paint. Here is the train all painted and complete. I saved the scariest part for last since the idea of this project is for me to be able to put this dress on when I'm done. I cut open the center back to create a corseted back and I really did not know how this was going to go. I wasn't sure if the tape was going to rip really badly or how this was going to turn out, but this was my only plan. I did not have a plan B in this because I didn't have a zipper. I didn't have any buttons. All I had was some yarn and I was hoping it would work. At first the tape did start to rip, but I just went in and reinforced the edges several times with different layers of tape. And once I did that, I was able to then stick a needle through and start creating this corset. And now that I could get in and out of the dress, it was time to put it on and take it for a spin. And this is it guys. I could not be happier with how this dress turned out. The detailing in the front panel with that nylon, the beading in the bodice, and that corseted back and long painted train. Who knew plastic and tape could look like this? If you're curious how I achieved this full look, in my next video I will be going over how I made this headpiece, how I did my hair and makeup, and the accessories I wore for this video shoot. A big thank you to my friend Madison for coming and filming me. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button so that you know when I post, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!